No, I think that's a really good question. And, and I was actually selected and sent a space to analyze that, to analyze something called the overview effect, which is what happens to your brain when you see Earth from space. And as an engineer, I went into this thinking, okay, like I'm gonna go this uh, and go into this with an open mind. We did a lot of psychological training before the flight to really like be as receptive and open to this experience as possible. And I thought that you had to be in space for at least a few months for you to actually experience the overview effect because we don't know, we don't really know if, you know, a short suborbital flight will actually give you that effect or not. And I would like to report that it really does. It's something that honestly very much surprised me to the like to what extent it actually has influenced my life. My launching my new company Strive was because of the space flights. So a lot of the things that I've been doing, my work in activism or my work that is related to trying to, you know, democratize access to space, something that I've been doing before going to space, but now the risks that I take, the way I see the world, my responsibility towards it has changed because of this flight, because of when you see Earth from space and when you experience something that's so very, very few people have ever experienced. Our ancestors have never experienced that. We haven't biologically evolved to experience this. So it makes sense that it changes you that much. For me, it kind of broke my reality. It broke my understanding of the world. And I, when I came back, I had to piece it back together, really try to understand why I was feeling a certain way. And from what, like, what did I see that made me feel that way? And I had to break it down into bullet points as an engineer, like for me, like it was, okay, like, this is what I saw, this is what I felt, like, why am I feeling this way? It felt very weird. It kind of, it's kind of like a restart button to your life, right. which is so weird. And I didn't expect it to be to this extent, to be very, very honest with you. I did not expect it to be this, you know, powerful and this profound. I think for me, it was, especially for my family and my parents and everyone, it was something that because no one around them had ever experienced something like this, something it's not something anyone can relate to. And because I was the first person in my country, and there had never been even a man before me from Egypt that had done this, it was such a, so it was a huge deal because for me, it's a huge weight and a lot of responsibility to break that first barrier and I don't take it lightly and I do take this responsibility with, you know, a lot of care and I, I do want to do something with this. And I am constantly trying to do as much as I can. Um, but I think, like, I, th I don't think the best to it's, it's like, I, don't, I mean, I think the part of it that was really, really difficult was for my parents, I believe, because it's just so far away from anything. So in terms of culture, like how it's changed, like how culture has influenced it. I think maybe not influenced me specifically in that trip, but I think it's influenced the whole country that now they look at it a little bit differently. Now they look at, oh, like a, an Egyptian woman has done this, which means we actually can do things, which means we do have the capabilities to do things, which means we're not less than a white man. Because we've always looked at this as the white man doing things. I've always looked at you know, for me, when I was growing up, do you think, no. uh, if you, when, you, when you think about an astronaut, you think about a white NASA man astronaut. That's the first image that comes to your mind, right? You'd never think about, you know, um, you know, anyone who's from this region or from the South or anywhere, right? Like, I think it's not just something that comes to your brain. And for me, that was the same thing. I never thought it was even an option. I never thought it was even something that you can dream about because it's just so far away. It's like, wanting to have superpowers it's just well actually you know we can't human beings don't have superpowers so it's just as simple as that like it's just not an option it's not something that is worth dreaming about because it just doesn't happen to us it doesn't happen to people like us it doesn't have people people from egypt from africa from the arab world it just doesn't it that, i think that's changed a little bit now i think there's a lot more uh, there's a lot of space agencies around the continent and around the region that are doing so much more. We have astronauts. We have, I think, I think we have right now about five UAE astronauts. We have four from Saudi. Uh, some have flown, some haven't, but these are like the ones that have been selected and are training. 
uh, two Saudi astronauts have flown, um, two UAE astronauts have flown, the two others have not. So there is progress. We are seeing, okay, now like the, in the whole Arab world, there's four in the UAE, four in Saudi, and one in Egypt. That's it. I really like this question, and I'll tell you why. Because I feel like there is, from my experiences coming back from space, I've been very fortunate to be sitting in rooms where a lot of policymakers are making decisions and really like listen to how things have been, are running, like how do systems work in the world? And as an engineer, that's not, not something that I even ever thought about. But it's a really, really interesting, it was a, it's, a, it's an incredible learning process that I've been having for the past few years. And it's really led me to um, also found and launch Strive because of that too, because I think we need to be taking big action in that way. I think if people are able to afford, um, you know, like I think when we're talking about uh, space tourism or things like this, I think that's a different topic, right? Yeah. But I think investing in space, if we're investing in the space technology, we are directly benefiting Earth too. Because I, I don't think we would be where we're at right now if we weren't investing or really striving to push, um, you know, the field forward as much as we are. Because we are using it in other fields too. And I, with Strive, what we're trying to do too is like every time we are testing a technology, we're applying it on the ground and we're applying in, in these different locations. And we give a platform for those in either government or in, in, in the commercial industry or in anyone who, who like any high net worth individual to invest in this tool. And I think if anyone is to go to space and they get this overview effect, they're going to want to invest in this. And we give them this chance too. So now we give them the platform where now that you've seen Earth from space, now you can kind of try to, this is, these are the action, like this is how it can be actionable, where we are trying to actually on the ground, do something about it. For me, I've always been someone who is very solution oriented. I don't really like to focus on um, the problem too much. I really like to focus on breaking it down and trying to find a solution to it. That's how I've, al how I've always been. So I try not to focus too much on what we can't control and how do we, without even changing people's habits, how do we actually supplement it with things that are compensating for these effects? For example, um, there's a lot of examples with, um, you know, producing uh, energy, but yeah. let's say like, can we really force everyone in the world to buy an electric car and uh, dump their, their own cars now that are run by diesel and fuel. I don't think that's very realistic um, unless they become super, super uh, cheap, unless it's something that's uh, being kind of incentivized by the government that is going to be able to supplement this. Um, unless there's a lot of changes in the system, it's not going to happen quickly. It's going to have to happen maybe in a very long time. But what if we can change um, you know, the type of fuel that goes into the car, that is the type of fuel becomes itself sustainable. Maybe that could be something because then they don't have to change their habits, but they just have to change where they're buying their fuel from, right? If it's not the type of fuel that is very, very damaging to earth, if the byproduct of that fuel um, isn't, um, you know, the byproduct isn't carbon dioxide and it's not some the things that are really damaging to our atmosphere, if it's something else like vapor or whatever, um, like, maybe that's a better solution, right? So these are things that we like to focus on too. And these are things that are actually, one example too is Moxie. So Moxie is an incredible technology that's been actually, this, it's, it was been, it's been worked on for more than 20 years. And in 2022, in 2020, sorry, it was sent on the Perseverance rover with NASA to Mars. And what it's been able to do there is use the carbon dioxide from the atmosphere to create oxygen. But she can do anything. Like I think we can all do so much more than we think we do. I think not to listen to everyone who wants you to, to be realistic. I grew up always, everyone around me is telling me to, to be normal, to be realistic, to like find a job. Like, like, you know, but every time anyone asked me what I wanted to be, like I couldn't see myself in anything that was around me. I always said like I wanted to be an innovator, an inventor, sorry. And I just wanted to invent something. I knew that there is so much more out there that I couldn't see. And for these five-year-olds, like to really believe that things can happen, things are changing. You never know what's going to happen. My likelihood of going to space was zero percent. 
if it wasn't for the commercial industry progressing the way it is for this one program to start. And I actually know this one program, how it started. It's because of this one person, Dylan Taylor. He went to space. When he came back from space, he started Space for Humanity to democratize access to space and to start this only astronaut program that is not government-based. So his trip to space and from his experience of seeing Earth from space, it opened up the door for Katya, who went before me, and to me. And there's only two citizen astronauts right now, but we need a lot more. And this five-year-old now could probably become the next astronaut and hopefully go to the moon and Mars. I still want to go to the moon, so hopefully I can go to the moon too. Yeah.